welcome back to my channel and happy new year um i would like to start off by apologizing for the mess around me i did tidy it up you can kind of see it behind me it is very hard to film in a hotel room but i'm spending the first few weeks of this year in dublin so i'll be filming from hotel rooms quite a bit i will explain all in my next vlog but i just wanted to really quickly say i'm sorry if i look a little bit gray and ashy i purchased a portable ring light on amazon and i have a feeling it's the wrong type of light so i'm hoping it's just my viewfinder and that it translates all right onto my laptop but there's not really much else I can do about that I mean it's 5 p.m. and it's completely pitch black outside and it's really dark in this hotel room too so it's the only light I can use but I'm really excited to get back into filming and back into work this year and I've been meaning to film some more speedy reviews for a very long time now I know they're very popular I know you guys find them really helpful and I really enjoy filming them too so I thought what better way to kick off 2019 than by filming my very first speedy review of the year and today I'm going to be reviewing this Charlotte Tilbury Magic foundation I mean this is not a new foundation by any means but I purchased it about three months ago in Toronto I went to Sephora and just picked up loads of different foundations that they had in my shade and kind of hope for the best because I wanted to try a few new bits so that's the one I'm reviewing today and I've even made a few notes just so that I can keep this short and sweet and to the point so yeah I'm gonna jump straight in first of all this foundation retails for 32 pounds you get 30 ml of product 30 ml is about right that is what nine 99.9% of foundations come in this size. £32 is obviously not affordable but then again I'm sure you guys know that Charlotte Tilbury is definitely not affordable. I will say though it isn't the most expensive foundation out there. The Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk is I believe 42 I want to say. I haven't purchased it for a while but I know you can obviously get foundations out there that cost a lot more than this so I would say it's about mid-range. It's definitely not a bad price and one that I would consider to be about average for the high-end market. The packaging looks like this, it comes in a glass bottle, nothing special really. It obviously has the rose gold detailing Maybe it's gold. It is so hard to see in this light. But this is what it looks like. There's not really much I can say about the packaging other than, yes, it's not very travel friendly because it's glass. But then again, most high-end foundations come in glass packaging. So what can you do? I wear this in the shade 8.5 medium. Not sure if the medium part is relevant, but this is the perfect match for my skin tone. And I'm actually wearing it today. Again, I don't know if you can tell in this light because this ring light might be really bad. So I'm hoping it looks like me I don't like a ghost but this is what the foundation looks like it is a demi matte finish so very similar to the Fenty Beauty foundation and it is full coverage this is what it looks like on my skin after about I've had it on for about five hours it, it kind of looks dewy but I would say it is demi matte it's not completely matte and if I'm completely honest with you guys I don't really know why I bought it on paper that is everything that i hate in a foundation if you've seen my reviews before you'll know that i'm not the biggest fan of full coverage foundation i just don't feel like i personally need it i much prefer a light to medium coverage foundation and something that i can just build upon if i need to i always assume i guess that full coverage foundations feel really cakey and heavy this one doesn't and that's probably another reason why i don't really like them but i much prefer something light to medium and i also don't really like a matte finish and here I am, I've ended up with this foundation. Truth be told, I actually really wanted to purchase the Light Wonder foundation, and that only comes in 10 different shades. They didn't have my shade in Sephora. 10 shades, by the way, is terrible. I mean, Charlotte Tilbury can do a lot better than that. They didn't have my shade, and I also feel like that might be too light a coverage for me. So I went with this one instead. It comes in 20 different shades. That isn't groundbreaking stuff. I mean, I feel like that's a bit below average. Obviously Fenty Beauty broke the market with like 40 different shades. I think Dior with their backstage foundation have kind of followed suit and loads of other brands are now starting to kind of pick up on this. So 20 isn't great but for me personally I'm very happy to find my perfect shade and I feel like it has just the right amount of like yellow undertone to it so I'm very pleased with this. I don't know like how sort of dark it goes or how pale it goes. I didn't really notice that I'm afraid so I can't help you out with that but 20 is a good sort of starting point I'd say for a high-end foundation so yeah like I said considering on paper this is the sort of foundation that I would normally hate I have to say that I absolutely love it in fact 
I don't quite know if it has knocked Fenty out of my top three. I haven't used a Fenty one for quite a long time, but if not, it is definitely in my top four foundations of all time. I absolutely love it. It contains hyaluronic acid, which gives your skin that extra boost of moisture, which is not only great for dry and dehydrated skin, it's great for all skin types, particularly at this time of year. And I feel like I can really tell that in the formula. So when you sort of squeeze a bit out onto the back of your hand or your beauty blender, it's not runny. So it doesn't like drip off like the back of your hand. It kind of stays still, but it isn't that thick that it's too hard to blend out. And I feel like that's probably down to the hyaluronic acid. It's very easy to blend out. I always just use a beauty blender i haven't tried it with a brush because i kind of gave up using brushes a very long time ago for me it is full coverage but i feel like for some people they may want fuller coverage and in which case it is buildable i had a couple of scars on my face that were sort of left over from like an allergic reaction i had to a product a long time ago and in that sort of area i do build it up just to sort of hide that scarring because it is quite prominent so it's definitely buildable I don't feel like it sits in my fine lines. My skin is quite normal, I'd say. It used to be combination, and on the odd occasion when it's warm, it can go a little bit oily. Never oily where it looks oily, but I know that it's a little bit oily in my T-zone, if that makes sense, and I can sometimes get dry patches on my cheeks. In fact, when I bought this in Toronto, it was absolutely freezing out there. My skin was really dry and dehydrated, and I found that it didn't cling to any dry patches. It didn't, like, sit in my smile lines. It just did everything that it's supposed to do, so I was very impressed with that foundation indeed. It also, like, I noticed it doesn't really separate, because some foundations tend to separate on my chin area, Sometimes my nose, but mostly my chin. I feel like maybe that's a bit oilier. It doesn't do any of that. Like As you can see, it's been on for five hours, which isn't a great deal of time, but when I've been traveling in the past, I've had my makeup on like all day and it just stays put throughout the day and it just makes my skin look so flawless. That is probably down to the fact that it is full coverage and like I said, I'm not used to that. So if you are one of these people like me that prefer like a light to medium coverage foundation, just try and get a sample of it. Just try it because you never know until you actually try these products what you're really going to think of them and I was so pleasantly surprised and in actual fact I'm so glad that I tried this foundation over the light wonder for some reason I've got a feeling that's going to be too light to medium coverage for me I may have to try and get a sample of it now that I'm back in the UK well I'm not I'm in Dublin. That's a whole different story. But I will have to try and get a sample of it sometime soon, just to give it a go and see how it works for my skin. One final point that I wanted to touch upon really quickly before I end this video is, like I said, I have normal skin and it isn't hard to blend out at all. I do feel like if you have dry skin, very dry skin or kind of dry skin you may find it harder to blend out it may not work as well for you if you have oily skin you're absolutely going to love this foundation oily skin combination skin normal skin assuming you like the demi matte finish and the full coverage which it isn't even like it's really hard to explain it's like demi matte but you sometimes look dewy. It's not like glowy or anything like that. I think dewy is a better way of describing it. So you may find that the longer you have it on throughout the day, towards the end of the day, you might start getting a few oils peeking through. That always happens to me with like 90% of foundations that I wear. But if you do have dry skin, it either may just not work for you or I would try and get a little sample. Get a little sample and just make sure that your skin is properly moisturised before you wear this foundation. You may find that you want to just add your own hyaluronic acid, your own serum, facial oil or whatever together with your moisturiser before you wear it. And that way it may work better for you. But I really hope you found this review helpful. I did try and keep it short and sweet like I said I would. If you have any more questions about this foundation then please leave them in the comments down below. Below. I haven't got a schedule for YouTube yet. I feel like I'm still recovering after Vlogmas. So I will be uploading as and when. So please make sure you're subscribed to my channel and that you've hit the bell notification. It just means that you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Also make sure that you're following me on Instagram. I'm challenging myself to upload more videos there too. So there's going to be content going out on all my various platforms. So make sure you're following me everywhere. But thank you so much for watching. I'll see you very soon with a new video. Bye!